Number three, we fail to succeed in our families because we, what? we do not have single-mindedness. One family. Family is even more important than church. Because who is church? Church comprises of strong, single-minded, determined families with a plan. Number four, why sometimes we do not succeed as a family? Because we do not believe in ourselves as a family. That is why I like the word that is always preached in this pulpit. A word that will inspire you. A word that will challenge you. Why? So that you can believe in the Lord and believe that you have been brought here for a specific task. Number five, some of us, we do not succeed in our marriages because we are not armed with passion. Passion for living. It's okay to work, but at the end of the day, you only have one life to live. Remember, life is like a coin. You may use it any way you wish, but you can only use it one time. Life is like a coin. You may use it any way you wish, but you can only use it one time. How many times have I seen young men, young women, older women, older men, grandmas, grandpas, in their deathbed, I have yet to hear one saying, I wish I spent more time at work. <laughs> it's always, I wish I spent more time with my family. It's always, I wish I invested more in developing my family and leaving a legacy. Why? Because what you do for yourself is gone when you are gone, but what you do for your family will remain as a legacy. Amen. <laughs> Number six, our objective is to be sure that we do this thing by having what? Goals, family goals. I just took my family the last time I was here. We went on a cruise. You say, well, David, I cannot afford a cruise, but you can take a walk. <laughs> it is healthy, it is not expensive. You don't have goals. Number seven, you are not pursuing significance. One reason why families do not have objective, they are not succeeding, there's no significance. What do you mean significance? In that you realize that it's all about loving Jesus and loving God's children. And charity begins at? And how do you do it? Thanks so much for that question. Please stretch your right hand, please. Pretend it is a mirror and repeat after me. I'm beautiful. I'm Say it like you really mean it, okay? <laughs> because some of you says if you have been baptized in lemon juice, I'm beautiful. <laughs> let's go, let's go. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Prachtig. Prachtig. Mooi. Mooi. Sharp. Sharp. Moja. Moja. Grand. I'm simply the best, I'm simply and I'm different. I'm, different. I'm, not I'm not a lemon. I'm God's lemonade. I'm, God's I'm not a scar. I'm, a I'm God's star. I'm, God's I'm not a chicken. I'm, a I'm God's champion. I'm God's I may not look like God's champion, <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is still working on me. I love you. I love you. Mwah. God bless you. have a productive life as a family. Oh, pursue those objectives so that we can succeed. The letter P out of the acronym HOPE means we must pursue contentment. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11. Paul continued writing to the church of Philippi says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore to be what? To be content. Here's the challenge. Families today are not content. Parents are spending too much money trying to impress their children. And we are creating a generation of spoiled brats. Young people need to learn to earn. My kid, Mpo, is 10, Musa is 13. I teach them on how to earn and I reward them. They must have chores because they need to understand that's what life is all about so that they can be content with the little things. Because the Bible says if you are content and faithful with little things, God will give you the bigger things. I'm worried today even some of us now becoming affluent that now the housekeeper is now supposed to do what we're supposed to do. Everything is being outsourced and later we'll even outsource our marriages if we're not careful. <laughs> contentment, there's no contentment. The man is busy, the woman is busy. It's a rat race. And I like it in a rat race because in a rat race it does not matter whether you win or you lose, you still remain a rat. <laughs> it's not a rat race. 
Contentment. Paul says, I've learned to be content. Ladies, there are some of you who are not content. And guys, some of you are not content. Let me help someone here today. We frustrate women, guys. And there are seven things that we do that drive women crazy. And the ladies will say? Yeah. Number one, brothers, here it is. It is a man that we call a chicken man. A chicken man is that man who lies to avoid dealing with issues. He's chicken. And it makes this woman to be discontent. The second kind of man is a commando man. He orders you, right, I command you in the name of Jesus, you will clean the dishes. <laughs> I command you that you will cook for me in the name of Jesus. You've got a commando man. Number three, you've got a guy that we call a vanishing man. You are in a discussion, he walks out in the middle of the discussion, beam me up, he's just gone, gone. <laughs> Number four, we've got a brother who's an invisible man. He is present in his absence. He just withdraws in his absence. He's there, da, ukon, just like that. <laughs> Number five, you've got a guy that we call a mystery man. He is vague. He has disjointed sentences. Where do you come from? Work. What were you doing? Working. I mean, what are you saying? <laughs> a mystery man. And then number six, you've got a volcano man. A volcano man bottles up feelings and then one day, boom, explodes. And we make the woman to be nervous around us. Number seven, you've got a secretive man. He works for the Scorpions and for the NPA. <laughs> National Prosecution Authority. He's always, even the way he walks, always. <laughs> when the cell phone rings, it's a no-go area. The poor woman must always go like this, you know. <laughs> Who's calling? <laughs> and then, brothers, we create this woman to be discontented. If you are single, available, and still taking application forms, this is a lesson. <laughs> but ladies, you also sometimes, you hinder us from being content as a family. And the brothers will say? <laughs> seven things, seven things. Hola. Hola. Seven things, seven things, ladies. Please. Stop calling him inappropriate names. Number two, stop nagging. He knows you need a car. <laughs> he knows you need, you need to, you know, load them. I understand all that stuff. And the brother say? Yeah. Inappropriate names. Nagging can create discontentment in our families. Number three, stop bringing up the past. You must never, you know, never. <laughs> the past is past. We are no longer prisoners of the past. We are pioneers of the future. Yes, I might have made a mistake in the family. I may not have been the godly father, the godly husband, but the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Please find it in your heart to forgive me and let's go on. Number four, please, ladies, catch me doing something right for a change. <laughs> and the brothers will say? Amen. Number five, number five. Paul says I must be content in my family. But how can I be content, ma'am, if you are always attacking my family? When we get into intense fellowship,